Welcome to Drone Week. My name is Erika Firmo. I work at GE and I'm live at Rio de Janeiro. Throughout the next five days, I will show you how GE is powering the Olympic Games. We will talk about healthcare. We will show you guys how we are developing technology for Olympic athletes. We'll talk about uh, intelligent lighting, power, oil and gas, everything through the eyes of our drones. And to kick off today's show, I have here with me Ken Hurt. Ken, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Can you talk a little bit about what is this uh, G Technology Center where we are in right now? Great, thank you, Eric. Yeah, so we're just thrilled to host the opening ceremony for Drone Week. It's, uh, it's a great, great event here. So this is our Brazil Technology Center for GE, and we have um, about 160 researchers here developing a lot of cool technologies, spanning a lot of different uh, industries of healthcare, aviation, transportation, um, renewables, uh, and so we have a lot of uh, very important uh, uh, areas that GE developed technology, for top technology here in the region. That's very nice. And I heard that this place was totally different from what, the, what we see right now. Can you talk a little bit about it? Absolutely. So just a few years ago, this uh, area behind us here was a soccer field and uh, was relatively undeveloped here. And over time, we were able to uh, develop the project and design this, this great building here. And today, uh, we're very proud to have a world-class facility with research uh, laboratories and uh, just the state-of-the-art capabilities. Nice. And Ken, I heard that today is a very special day for you. Is that it? Yes, absolutely. So just by coincidence, today is my 33 years to the day that I've been working for GE as a technologist. I started back in the uh, in the early days working in um, MR technology, and today, you know, we have just amazing technologies like drone technology that we're working on, and we're doing some advanced inspections uh, using drones. So we're going to talk more about that later. But it's, it's the the, the, uh, the technology has evolved over the last 33 years, and it's been a lot of a lot of fun working for the company and just developing product technology for a variety of areas. Thank you very much, Ken. I will be with you again in a minute. And guys, right over there, we have our drones getting ready to take off. We will have a special drone uh, opening ceremony here at the, the Drone Week. But before we start, let's take a look on uh, what is going on behind today's story. Drone Week premiered last summer as a way for us to bring viewers live and up close to the often hidden, stunning, and always powerful GE technology, which helps make the world run. Drones and robotics are critical for many industries here at GE, from inspecting wind turbines 300 feet tall to monitoring gas pipes thousands of feet below sea level. Drones allow us to explore the world's most extreme environments. They also allow us to give people at home a rarely seen perspective of the immense scale and impact of GE technology. This year, as not only a worldwide partner of the world's most watched event, but as a key player in the infrastructure that makes the Rio 2016 Olympic Games run, we bring Drone Week to Rio. We kick off this week of live drone programming from what can be considered the heart and brain of GE in this country, the Brazil Technology Center. Later this week, we'll show you an insider's look at the Tech Center. But first, since we're here as part of the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, we begin Drone Week through our own opening ceremony with drones. Most drones that people see and are familiar with are designed for aerial photography. We're actually not using a lot of those features, and instead um, we're taking advantage of the fact that the drones have sensors on board to keep them in the air. The inspiration for the drone storm, really we wanted to create a spectacle in, in the third dimension because normally when you see a show it's on the ground and there, there's going to be colors and lights but it doesn't usually go up in the air. 
These drones that you see in front of you and the drones that we've talked about, they're actually going to take off and they're going to fly themselves and they're going to create these patterns in the sky, um, sort of an aerial light show. And it's all going to be set to music. We're basically going to do a, a live drone demonstration where no pilots are actually in charge of the aircraft. So it's all computer controlled. So we're programming the drone's movements with a combination of software that we've written um, and other, some, some tools out there that's normally used for things like choreography and other, other types of shows, normally not in the air. The drone swarm requires a lot of different moving bits. Um, we have obviously a lot of engineering, so there's software that has to go into designing a drone swarm and a drone ballet. The swarming is based on GPS, and so GPS positions are how we design and choreograph the whole routine. Um, there's a pretty complicated way of, of, of actually going out to the field and taking measurements. To get those measurements, we had to go to Brazil. We were able to record GPS positions. Um, we also have to measure for interference. So the lighting that you guys are going to see on the drones is definitely uh, in sync with the music. Um, and it's actually pre-programmed using some very cool tools. What we were able to do is to take uh, a keyboard, which is normally used to sort of record music, and we're able to set up keys using software that we wrote to actually trigger different things to happen in the air with the lights. Um, and you're basically going to watch a whole performance come to life. And it's going to be in, it's going to be in conjunction with flight and music uh, and lights changing color in the sky. I'll be live after the swarm to answer any of your questions about our technology that we use or about the experience of being in Brazil. It's all coming up now, live from Rio. And we are back. As I told you guys, our drones are almost ready to take off. Don't forget to send your questions through Facebook. I will have Ken again with me and also Radley Angelo. He's our drone expert and he, they will both be answering questions live. Uh, enjoy the show.
super cool, Ken. What do you think about it? Wow, that was just amazing. What a great show. I really enjoyed it. Right? Uh, Ken, can you tell us how G is using drones on its operations? Absolutely. So we've been exploring drones in a variety of ways. We're looking at using drones, for example, um, to do very advanced inspections. So we think about it in a couple of ways. One would be like horizontal inspections. So an example would be like inspecting uh, pipelines, gas pipelines or transmission lines, could be um, uh, rail, uh, railroad tracks. And so we, the drones give you uh, range and high resolution so we can do inspections that really are very difficult to do um, just by, you know, with humans. The other thing we look at is in the vertical uh, domain, we think about inspecting things like um, large stacks or um, wind turbines. So these are things that are very hard to, to again, to get an, a human up to inspect it. And so we're making the shift from using humans to finding uh, those problems to fixing them. So really it's much better use of the, of the resources. Thank you, thank you very much, Ken. And guys, I have with, with me now Riley Angelo. He's our drone expert. Hi, Erica, great to be with you. Great to have you here. Uh, Riley, I have questions coming from social media, and the first one is, someone wants to know if this is the same drones we're gonna have with us throughout the week. Yeah, so these drones are a little bit smaller than the ones that we're gonna use the rest of the week. Um, we use these ones for swarming, but the camera drones that we use for the live video feed are a little bit bigger, um, and they also have interchangeable lenses, which we're gonna, you're gonna see different fields of view and different uh, camera angles the rest of the week. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, another one for you, Ken. Someone wants to know uh, what kind of research do we have here at the Technology Center? So thanks, everybody. Yeah, we have a lot of great technology here. We have about 160 technologists working here at the center with a variety of backgrounds, mechanical, electrical, physicists, and uh, chemists, computer scientists. And we work on uh, primarily on technologies to help GE and our customers here in the region. So, for example, we're working with some of our healthcare customers to help them uh, develop software analytics around how they use GE's imaging equipment. So they have, in some cases, hundreds or thousands of units around in clinics, and we're helping them to be able to use that more effectively, better patient outcomes, more productivity. We're also working uh, with the, with uh, companies like in the mining industry to help bring um, solutions to their locomotives to help them operate. Think of it as like a um, autopilot kind of technology, so they can they can use less fuel, reduce their emissions, and and just improve their operations overall. And then lastly, we do a lot of work to help the GE businesses because they, we do a lot of manufacturing in the region here. So we have technology to help them be very productive, very high quality products, and, and uh, basically um, state of the art capabilities here in the region. Thank you, that's interesting. And another one for you, Rally. Uh, someone wants to know how you guys coordinate the drone ballet. Sure, yeah, so the key to coordinating the ballet is to make sure that the drones are always reporting their position. Um, the swarm is made up of GPS coordinates, so the drones have like a pre-programmed flight path uh, for each of them. But they have to sort of talk to the ground to make sure they don't run into each other and to make sure the timing is all right. So the drones actually are connected to the radios on the ground, and the radios are connected to our own uh, wireless network that we created. Got it, thank you. Uh, another one for you, Ken, and it connects what we are just talking about now. Uh, how drones uh, help G uh, uh, real, uh, at the field with our employees? You know, so we, um, we've been exploring uh, robotics in general, but drones is a piece of that. So we've been developing technologies around um, controls and automation, and so we can bring in some of our expertise across the center here, but also worldwide. Um, we've been, um, you know, using the drones for inspections on uh, a variety of things that I mentioned for large or tall structures or long distance kinds of inspections. But we're also using robotics um, in, in inspecting machines. So for example, uh, generator technology generators require inspections periodically and we've got advanced robotics that allows us to get in the machines and spot troubles early and avoid problems so that the operators don't have to have any unplanned shutdowns and we can catch problems early and, and, and resolve them in the most effective way for our customers. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And Riley, can you talk a little bit about the light on the drones that we just saw, how you coordinated? Yeah, definitely. So I talked about the wireless network that we have to control the drone's position. We also have a separate wireless network for the lighting. And the lighting was done in sync to the music and the drone's position, but it is a separate wireless network and they both work together to create the, uh, the swarm. Nice. <laughs> One more for you, Ken. Um, this is about the Olympics. So what's the role that the technology plays on powering the Olympic Games? So GE has a lot of uh, technology we bring into the, to the Olympics here. For example, in lighting, we have very high efficiency LED lighting that GE is installing throughout the venues, the Olympic venues. 
So it's allowing us to, uh, allowing the Olympics events to use less power and very high quality lighting for the events. We're also been, uh, with healthcare, we've been bringing some medical imaging equipment and electronic medical records so the athletes can, can get the best quality care. They can track some of their, their healthcare uh, status here while they're um, you know, in, in the uh, Rio area. So those are some examples. We also have, in the, in, the, in the case of power and power reliability, we have um, our GE um, Energy Connections business is helping to make sure that the power is, is reliable and it's, it's going continuously during the events. That's important. <laughs> Thank you again. And Riley, um, tell me more about the soundtrack that you guys use on the drones. Yeah, so for this drone ballet, we really wanted to do something unique to Brazil. So we actually worked with a local Brazilian artist to create that soundtrack. And as you noticed, the choreography, the lights, the movement, it was all in sync with the music. And we worked really hard to preserve that. So when the music sort of changed pace, the drones changed direction and lighting. Um, and so we worked very closely with him to make sure we had a soundtrack that was fitting for the drone ballet. That's cool. I love the soundtrack. Thank you. Guys, this is the last question, but thank you very much for being with us today. And if you are watching now, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. In case you are in Brazil, it's going to be 2 p.m. our time. In case you are in North America, tune in 1 EST time. We will be back uh, in a special place in the middle of a lagoon with an Olympic, a real Olympic team, so you can miss it. Uh, also, don't forget to follow us on Snapchat, General Electric. We will be live showing you behind the scenes. See you tomorrow.